Hello, and welcome to Form First Podcast. I'm Laura. And I'm Peter. We are the founders of Form First Fitness app. This podcast focuses on the sport of indoor rowing. We cover topics ranging from health, training, injury prevention, and how technology can help us as athletes to get better while staying healthy. We boil down complex science topics, bringing you the latest research from the field of rowing and technology, and we very often have some pretty cool guests on our podcast. Yeah. So join us today for another episode of Form First Podcast, where we'll be talking about warm-up and muscle activation. Very important. Yeah. And very often overlooked. So yeah. let's go. Cool. Let's go. Well, welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that is quite often very overlooked, but yet crazy important. And uh, we already talked about one of those things, mobility, uh, but even going a little bit more kind of in depth of like preparation and, you know, kind of keeping, you know, taking care of yourself apart from, you know, of course, your regular training uh, routine is, you know, it's muscle activation as well. Um, and this is also another important aspect that we believe it's very, very often overlooked by athletes. And we just want to talk to talk about yeah. it a little bit today. You know, what are the important things? Why muscle activation is important? And then we're going to talk a little bit more specific about muscle activation and muscle activation that you can do before your workouts as a rower. Um, and how can that benefit you uh, in your training and just your general performance? Yeah. So first, I want to discuss in general terms why it's good to actually have a nice warm up and activate your muscles. Yeah. So, of course, one reason is to actually prevent injuries. There is actually yeah. a statistic uh, that almost over uh, well, over thirty percent of sports injuries are related to uh, you know not being warmed up or, or yeah. muscular injuries, and uh, there are all, uh, a lot of benefits. Uh, they are actually uh, nicely summarized in uh, one review article from 2007 from the Journal of uh, Sports Medicine. Uh, and then there they discuss the different reasons why it's actually good to, to warm up. So one of the reasons is uh, increasing the diameter of blood vessels. You kind of start moving more blood to your yep. and delivering more oxygen and yep. blood and nutrition. Yes, to our, your muscles. actually, uh, our blood vessels are pretty elastic. And as yep. we as we exercise, they actually expand quite significantly. So that is definitely. Yeah. So thing. that's, that's, that's one thing. Uh, the actual warming up, apparently the actual warming up of muscles has a factor in it as well. Yep. And, uh, another factor is also when you start exercising, uh, it, it kind of prepares the muscle, um, yep. uh, the, the kind of stretching that occurs prepares the muscle to not break when you are actually doing the exercise yes, later. Yes. Which is, I guess, which is one of the reasons why we also call it keep it warm, you know, yeah. like, you know, you, you warm up and you bring a little bit of blood and then it gets uh, kind of a little bit more elastic and a little bit yeah. more uh, also, I mean, I guess flexible is not the right way of thinking of it, but yes, it's... Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, we discussed this, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. We actually talked about, you know, flexibility and mobility and, you know, what the difference is. So if you haven't seen that one, you can also actually go on our channel and uh, watch our uh, mobility versus flexibility uh, video. Uh, but I think it's it's also interesting to, to talk about and discuss, um, I mean, uh, again, I'm not necessarily supporting this with, uh, you know, with scientific research, but I would say that, um, you know, we can think of warm up in several different ways. Yes, one is like raising your core body temperature, inclusive of your muscles, yeah. you know, stretching those blood vessels. Um, to me, also warm up could mean raising your heart rate to a certain level. And often when you're doing, um, you know, kind of high, and we're going to talk a little bit about it, you know, when you're doing like high intensity work as rowing is, kind of it's very very um challenging on the heart rate um you know it's also kind of getting your your pulse a little bit high so you condition your heart for exercise but i also mean kind of um you know often i also mean activating your muscles but without necessarily fatiguing them yeah you know so there's different ways of warming up that we can do um you know that that you know some of that warm up depending on our physical uh, capacity and or the the warm up versus our overall uh, capacity to 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 kind of uh, um, you know do work 
uh, in a very general terms can can kind of vary, but often, uh, you know, um, if, if we kind of warm up a little bit too long or too hard can actually fatigue us a little bit. And then we don't we don't have that much kind yeah. of in the tank for the for the actual workout. So I actually want to talk about uh, also how we can activate without necessarily fatiguing our muscles. Yeah, definitely. There are again, this is a very well described uh, thing. As, as you mentioned, there are three components, three main components for uh, warming up. And that's one thing is the neuromuscular activation, uh -huh. where you kind of start warming up the, the, the communication pathways, yes. you know, the nerves and how quickly the muscles start Can reacting, yeah. uh, start reacting to those neural impulses. The other component is the dynamic warm up yeah. or uh, stretching, where you start uh, instead of, so for example, in the past, there was a tendency to to do static exercises during warm up. Yeah. And that's actually that has been researched and is was shown to be actually more damaging than helpful as oh, really? as a warm up. Yeah. Because uh, apparently it's it's much better to do those static exercises post training. Yep. Yeah. Because you need you need to warm up the muscles, you need to stretch them, you yeah. need to prepare the joints as well for, yeah. for the motion that's going to come during the exercise. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then the last part is actually cardiovascular, which is where you actually start Working. doing more of the, the temperature, heating up, and yeah. getting the blood flow. And raising so, your, your heart rate as well, yeah. uh, which, which helps in different levels. As you said, not only warming up the body, but also conditioning the heart for for like a, an intensive workout. And yeah. it has been shown that very often when we jump in directly from a, uh, from a, from a point of rest or like um, a heart rate that is very, very close to our uh, resting uh, heart rate to a very intensive workout, that could be pretty heavy on the heart, one thing. And second, um, you actually kind of warm up in the workout, which is not what you want. Yeah. You don't want, you want to maximize your workout. You want to maximize or get the best out of your, your workout session, or maybe you're also competing and you want to kind of be already conditioned for this. You don't want to get in and just then start kind of, you know, raising your heart rate, kind of getting warm and getting a little bit more stretching and uh, flexibility. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, also trying to keep it short. You don't, you don't want to be, you know, warming up for half an hour. And again, there, there are... Very often, like people would warm up, and especially uh, before competition, you might end up warming up. And I think this is a little bit yes. more issue yes, with an issue with an organization, like with an event organization. But um, but yeah, sometimes you actually end up warming up a little bit too long. But that's a more of a yeah, exception I, ideally, than the rule. Yeah, exactly. There are several kind of general guidelines that you would like to keep. So one of them is again the duration. The other one is that it should be tailored for the athlete and the, the exercise and the workout that yes. you're going to be performing. Yes. So warm up is going to be different for somebody who's rowing or somebody who's running, somebody who's cycling lifting or weightlifting. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. So definitely you need to think about what is going to happen. Are we going to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. So what else did you find? So uh, that's uh, most most kind of the general details and uh, there were, I found a lot of uh, examples. Yep. Mo most of them were, you know, for cycling and running, but uh, I don't know, let's see, let's discuss uh, maybe the, the specifics for rowing. Yeah, uh, to me, uh, I would say that again, to me, um, again, warm up is, is important and I see activation as part of warm up. Uh, but to me, is, um, it is very, very important to activate your muscles. And the way I view this, just to, just to kind of lay down what I understand as activation, for me, the ideal activation is um, managing to pump your muscle with blood without necessarily fatiguing it, as I said, without necessarily doing a lot of work with it. And I think this does two things. As I said, A, your muscle is conditioned and it's ready to work as soon as you kind of hit the workout. Um, and I get that, and I guess that will be crazy important when we're talking about 
you know, especially shorter workouts or more explosive, you know, sprints um, or, or like the two, the usual 2000 meter test or maybe even shorter distances where you really want to get this power and you want to come in and you're kind of ready for it. Um, and for me, good activation as well doesn't fatigue you, as I said, like, so you can definitely activate by performing the exercise and you can definitely kind of, if you're rowing on the earth, you can get on the rower, you yeah. can kind of work a little bit and, and do all the things that we said, you can activate your muscle, you can get your heart rate up, you can, you know, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that that is necessarily bad, but you know, again, if you're going for a maximal effort and especially for competition or for kind of trying to hit your personal best, I don't necessarily think this is the best possible, uh, you know, course of action. I think there are a lot of a lot of things that, um, you know, that, that you can do better. And also um, a lot of uh, a lot of organizations and a lot of coaches actually uh, talk about, for example, activation of the glutes and glutes are a huge muscle group that can produce so much power and can, you know, can help you add so much force onto your leg drive and the way yeah. you transfer, you know, the, the, the power from your legs to your trunk in the, in the stroke phase, you know, in stroke drive. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What yeah I, think, I think glutes are definitely very Glute. important of, uh, yes. part and of the thing is, energy. And yeah. the thing is that they're so big, they're so big that sometimes, we end up activating them properly or pumping them with, with, with blood properly, like all the way through. Sometimes even at the end of the workout, or maybe if it's like a low intensity, maybe not even then, yeah. which is like a massive loss in potential, in potential yeah. of like a, you know, um, like a force uh, production and, um, and just kind of, you know, wasting energy and wasting, you know, potential in a way. Um, and the thing is that why the glutes are so difficult to activate, not because they are so big, because also the, you know, all, our thighs in general, the hamstring, the quads, they're also very large muscles, but the glutes are especially thick. Okay. So is, you know, in a way to kind of activate the muscle in depth properly, you need to spend a little bit more time to properly activate it okay is it a question of like getting the blood flow all the way through yes, the muscle through. okay yes, exactly and so as you said kind of uh, work a little bit this neuro uh neuro uh muscular connection this kind of as is it called you know uh body mind connection yeah. you know which is the 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 neurological um you know firing of the muscles how they respond and also how pumped are they with blood um, this is especially true for the glutes. I would say after that is, of course, the quads and the hamstrings. Um, we want to have those very, very nicely worked and, and kind of also filled up with blood and, um, and warm. And normally you would hear people talking a little bit more about activation of the bigger muscles. But I have, um, I think that also it is crazy important for us to activate the smaller muscles. And I'll tell you why, because also when we are working out and then uh, rowing is such a whole body experience that if we don't activate the small muscles, they can almost, I would say, like hide behind the bigger ones. Yeah, because you can still see the calories counting. Yeah. And not... but maybe maybe it impacts your form or exactly. So if you if you if you don't activate your your smaller muscles, you know, the bigger ones can compensate and yeah. that's not necessarily good. That can be detrimental to your form. That can be detrimental to, to your overall performance, to, to your technique, you know, um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and it is, um, and it is very, very important. And, uh, I guess those muscles are all the small, uh, muscles at the back. I would say, um, anything from the de deltoid to, to, of course, the traps, you know, all the back muscles, um, and I would say, um, no, I don't think that much the calves, cause I guess we kind of activate them with the, with the, with the rest of the legs, but I would say primarily the back muscles and the shoulders are definitely small muscles that if not activated properly, they can definitely kind of, as I said, be compensated by the larger ones. So yeah. I can totally imagine if you don't activate and if you're a little bit more of a beginner and you don't have that good of a technique you could let your, you know, your lats compensate for your shoulder activation. Um, and then dropping the shoulders and kind of, um, you know, even in the long term, create those stress fractures on the, on the collarbone and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so 
you know, activation of the smaller muscles is also important. And it is also important to do it properly, as I said, the way without fatiguing them. And because they're so small, it is so easy to fatigue them. Yeah. So you don't want to end up kind of taking dumbbells and just like doing dumbbell rows, even that you could, and that would be probably not too bad for the lats uh, and so on. Um, but you want to be careful. And again, you want to activate them. You want to be able to keep them engaged, to keep them, um, you know, um, again, active, but not too, uh, you know, not fatigued. Yeah, definitely. They, again, one of the general guidelines I found was that you want to work at most 20% of the effort. Yes. So, and this is very, very tough when you want to keep warm, when you want to raise your heart rate yeah. and you want to pump your muscles with blood, but you still have to kind of keep it at a like ro uh, uh, lower range of effort. And that's very, very tricky. Um, and of course, we know is, is, is rowing is a full body <laughs> exercise. Um, uh, but there are some muscle groups that are a little bit more active. Uh, and uh, I would like to talk, as we said, the deltoid muscle, so your whole shoulder. Um, of course, the biceps, the triceps, um, uh, your your pecs, I guess, a little bit less. Um, but I would like to also talk about like kind of the gen, all the back muscles and going down towards the glutes, the quads, the, the, the hamstrings, um, and of course, the back muscles, the lats, the traps. Um, um and, and and so on and we, what we actually have prepared and we're gonna um run uh some of those exercises we have actually filmed um a special video for some great muscle activation uh for you guys that you can do um and we have started it as we said from 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 top to bottom from the shoulders to um to the traps and the lats and we have tried to keep it uh, a little bit uh iso isometric um so a lot of those are holds a lot of those are, um, you know, kind of keeping the tension high, so you can allow the the, the muscle to pump with blood. Yeah. Uh, and 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 again, to to keep it low effort. The only ones that are a little bit more active and will probably kind of, you know, get your also heart rate up are the ones to do with the lower body, so the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, because as we said, they are just so big uh, muscles and they're very very large and very thick uh, muscle groups. Mm, that that you do want to kind of put a little bit more effort and really feel this firing um, of, of the muscles and and I can almost every time when I activate my glutes I can almost feel them kind of shaking a little bit and I almost feel my muscles swelling a little bit yeah, which is exactly what you want uh, as so not necessarily feeling muscle tiredness or so on but you feel them a little bit swollen and a little bit kind of pumped um, maybe even firmer uh, but that's the that's the feeling you want to go for. Um, so this is pretty much it. Uh, I think um, muscle activation is super important, and it really allows you to to kind of hit your workout directly to to be really really ready for it. Um, I think it's so much better to think um, of your warm up is where do you want to get your heart rate and where do you want to get your muscles activated more yeah. than just than more just you know the the conventional warm up which is just do of what you what you normally do um and 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 really i mean ideally if i was to be preparing or to be warming an, an athlete up for for like a test or for a sprint i would definitely get them to uh, even not on a boat or on the erg funny enough and i know probably some some will go like well what are you talking about but I'll probably have them to do their mobility, to do a little bit of stretching yeah. pre, and then to do the isometric um, and like a little bit more active, like to activate properly. And just before the workout, I'll have them do something very, very high intensity, even like an assault bike or a bike or something like this to just get their heart rate, even, yeah. even skipping rope or something like just something to get their heart rate high enough. So they get into the workout in a, with a good heart rate already, not fatigued, really activated, the muscles are pumped and they kind of get in and they just go for it. Yeah. And I'm sure that that's going to be way, way, way better than, than, than just kind of warming up for, for many, many minutes, uh, maybe 20, maybe half an hour on, on, on the erg and hoping that your body just conditions in it. Just be a little bit more smart, guys. That's what I would say that I think to, to, to me, this is definitely the smarter way of training and the smarter way of preparing yourself for competitions or tests or, as I said, even workouts. Um, 
if you do like those uh, those exercises, we're going to be posting them separately, just the exercise session with some voiceover explaining of of what exactly um, you know the exercises the exercises are about and what you should feel and how exactly to perform them. Um, and yeah, as as, as usual, uh, please uh, let us know what you think, uh, whether you like it, whether we should uh, keep talking about building strengths, activation, mobility, and this kind of, yeah. I would say, marginal topics that are very rarely discussed within the rowing community. And of course, you can always find everything on our website, formfirst.app, on our YouTube channel, um, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, pretty much everywhere on the internet is formfirst.app. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much that's it. Yeah. Well, now we're going to run, uh, of course, for those of you that are listening to us on, on just a podcast, you can find this on YouTube and you can either watch us say exactly what you heard us say for now or, <laughs> or just watch the exercises. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoy them and we'll see you next week. Cool. See yeah. you then. Well, the first exercise is a simple uh, band Passover. Um, it is really, really nice uh, to uh, to do this particular exercise. If you do have a band, it really nicely fires up your deltoids or your shoulder muscles. I recommend you keep a little bit of attention um, in your shoulders as you do that. Um, of course, if you can do it in a deep squat, um, it is even better because you also activate your back muscles, which is fantastic. But if you can't, don't worry about it. This is a pretty challenging variation. And again, just do some nice pass throughs, like whatever feels nice. You don't necessarily have to do it, um, you know, both arms at the same time, but just, but just keep the tension, um, in the band as you're doing that. Uh, this is also very, very nice if you do have a band. Um, you can either do it with the thumbs pointing in, the way I'm doing it right now, and that kind of fires up a little bit more your shoulders. And if you have your thumbs po pointing outwards, then it also uh, helps activate your lats a little bit as well as your shoulder. So, um, yeah, just um, kind of amend the tension as much as you need. Uh, of course, if you don't have equipment, this is a fantastic exercise. We have shown it in the mobility video and I can't recommend it more for both mobility activation. Um, but don't forget to keep your lower back against the wall, shoulders, elbows and uh, arms against the wall and to maybe um, five to ten slides. Keep your shoulders active. And again, if you can't really stretch your arms to the top, don't worry. It's very, very challenging. So. Don't be deceived by my smile. It is actually really tough. I really, really love this exercise. Um, this is a um, wall twist. Um, it really nicely activates your back as well. It keeps a fantastic tension in the shoulder. And I really, really, really felt a great pump uh, from this particular exercise. So just try to kind of slide over and reach as far as you can. It is very important to... Um, not to press too much against the wall, kind of use it to anchor yourself, to hold a little bit, but don't necessarily press or drag yourself. Just try to keep that shoulder really active and kind of just hold there for a few seconds. So this is amazing. Uh, and I really, really felt such a fantastic activation for my shoulders doing this exercise. So this is also a great variation. Um, this is more of a sweeping motion and uh, so to say wall circles. Um, and you do the same sweeping motion, uh, standing as close as you can to the wall. Both of those exercises, don't worry if you can't do them in a deep squat, um, the way I'm showing them here. If you really, really challenge in your deep squat, just feel free to stand up and, um, and do them standing, but I can definitely say the effect is not the same. But of course, if you're having issues with your mobility, do them standing. But if you can sit in a squad, I definitely recommend doing them in a squad and in a, as deep as possible squad, that being said. All right, if you do have a foam roller, um, I really, really like activating my uh, lats uh, and my triceps, um, and especially that little place where uh, the shoulder connects with the lats. Um, you know, on a foam roller, you can do it, um, you know, uh, 
uh, laying on the floor. I have also shown a variation with a lacrosse ball uh, in our mobility video. This is very, very nice um, also for mobility. But in this case, it's a great way to activate the lats and kind of get a little bit more blood into the muscle um, as we roll it with a foam roller. This is an amazing lat activation exercise with no equipment. So what you have to do here is basically you slide backwards, you ha you hand as far as you can, and then you turn it 90 degree to your uh, feet or to your body. You turn your thumb backwards and you press with your elbow inwards as much as you can. So we will repeat that. So you go back and then you put your arm and your thumb 90 degrees and you try to turn your thumb backwards and then you keep your elbow as back as you can. And this is an amazing way to activate your lats. Just do this um, and maybe hold it for three, four or five seconds is a great way to really, really feel your lats kind of getting uh, filled up with blood. This is also a great option. So you hold the band and you activate your lats. So you, you pull before you walk away and then you start walking out as much as you can while keeping the tensions and keeping your lats activated as much as you can. Take a little bit of a rest. So pull and then walk back a little bit while keeping the lats active. This is also a great way to activate your latissimo dorsi without necessarily fatiguing it and kind of getting it ready for that workout. So that's a awesome um, exercise. For your um, uh, legs and in general for the, um, uh, for the quads, um, I would recommend uh, kind of step ups. You can do it on a box, you can do it on a bench, you can do it on a chair at home. Uh, and if a step up is not challenging enough for you, you can do a couple of jumps the way I'm doing here. This is a great exercise to activate your uh, hamstrings if you don't have um, any equipment. So what you want to do is you want to point your toes and you wanna squeeze your hamstring as much as you can. And trust me, it looks very easy, but the activation that you get on the hamstring is quite, quite amazing. Here, you'll have to do a little bit longer hold than you'll do probably for any other exercise. I would say anything from eight to 15 seconds, and you probably have to do it a little bit more um, you know, uh, more reps than with other exercises, but it's a fantastic way to activate uh, the, the, the quads um, without any equipment. So now to the glutes. This is one of my favorite glute activation exercises. And again, with a band. What you want to do here as you do your uh, monster walks, banded monster walks, is you want to make sure that you never really put your feet together because you do want to keep that band tension as you move um, as you move through the exercise. So you want to be uh, kind of pushing or doing an abduction on your, on your legs as you're moving forward or backwards in this in this case but this will fire up your glutes like there is no tomorrow honestly only maybe 20 of those forward backwards left and right are more than enough to really fire up those glutes and get them ready for exercise if you want to that's also a very very nice way to kind of fire up the glutes uh, and the abductors is to do some kind of air squats, banded air squats. What is very, very important here is that you push those knees out as you are doing squats and then you're creating some tension um, in, the, in the legs and also activating uh, the glutes. Very, very nice exercise. The last one is kind of a way to activate both the glutes and the quads. 
sorry, and the hamstrings. Um, and you can do this on a bench. You can do this on uh, even on your sofa. As you can see here, I'm doing it on a box. It's not crazy stable, but it still works. So this is a great way that absolutely equipment free, you can kind of activate your glutes.